How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another FPL video and today we're going to be looking at some players we got to keep our eye on from game week 34 onwards. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So with the five players that I've chosen today, I've kind of looked at three kind of main criteria here. The first one is a turn of fixtures. So some players that now have really good fixtures on paper or are playing against lower opposition, maybe they're playing teams in the bottom three, maybe they're just, you know, starting to see some form, but mainly a turn of fixtures which will favor them in the remaining game weeks. We also are we're looking for a low-ish own, so like around 10% or less. There is a couple exceptions on this list. One is around 10% and one of them is around 15%, but they're kind of key players that I think could be something to look at as well. And then lastly, someone who's kind of peaking or in terms of form-wise or maybe passes the eye test in terms of what they can, you know, kind of offer. So first off, we have have Fabianski to my left you know he's he's only got four clean sheets this season he hasn't been in the starting lineup because he's been injured and kind of been in and out of the team however he's only two percent owned and when Fabianski's kind of on his game he will receive save points he's going to be that kind of you know crucial figure if West Ham are to stay up and you know with a team that's trying to fight and, you know, stay in the Premier League, you know, just above the drop zone and getting that result versus Chelsea can be a real momentum booster and it can kind of maybe solidify their defense. And you might start to see some clean sheets from Fabianski, who's under 5 million and is quite, quite good and has been a previously good asset when he used to play for Swansea and his previous teams went in the Premier League. In his four of his five remaining fixtures are against weaker opposition, the only one being Manchester United away, which is not the greatest fixture. So he could potentially do a rotation there, or kind of just suck it in and just hope United doesn't score five like they did against Bournemouth. And like I mentioned before, he also gets a lot of save points. And don't underestimate him when it comes to penalties as well. He's very well known, much like Tim Krul, for saving penalties. So I think Fabianski could be a very good asset and a very cheap asset in goal rather than having to go for the likes of you know Edison or Allison who's going to cost you one one and a half million more he could be very valuable and at a low ownership I would be keeping an eye on Fabianski for the current game week as he hasn't played yet in game week 33 but definitely going forward he could be very useful in the next coming game weeks so next up on our list we have the big man from West Ham we have Antonio, he's 0.9% owned, which is you know very low percentage here, and he could provide a you know a unique kind of midfield slot at only 6.9 million. Like we mentioned before, his next three fixtures are very good. Obviously, he could still potentially get something against Manchester United, who still conceded two versus Bournemouth, and that's their only real weak fixture on paper. But you know, Burnley at home, they can get something. Norwich away, everyone's beating Norwich. Watford at home, they conceded three to Chelsea, who they just recently beat. So he could you know provide some you know some assists or goals there and with the likes of Sebastian Haller's return that could boost Antonio significantly and potentially Haller could also be an asset as well being at 6.8 million currently I, I just think that Antonio is you know worth mentioning because when watching him in the Chelsea game he was by far and away the best player on the pitch man in the match in my books and the eye test just showed that he's his hold up play is very good his BPS underlying stats are very good he obviously can score. He has tremendous pace. He has incredible power. And he just seems like a unique asset that's basically undroppable for West Ham at the moment. And he just tirelessly never stops working for the team, which kind of gives his team a boost. It kind of shows that, hey, look, we're still in this fight. We're still trying to basically work our way out of the bottom three. We don't want to get relegated. You know, we're just kind of above the drop zone at the moment. And basically a couple more wins will secure that. They're they're kind of probably looking to basically pick up three points in their last three games versus Burnley, Norwich, and Watford. If they do that, I'm pretty sure they'll be safe on, I think it will be 39 points if they get maximum points from those three games. And he had five shots versus Chelsea, four of which were inside the box. Obviously, one of them being a goal as well and you know he's just a fantastic asset he is in a very congested you know kind of midfield battle here because we have a lot of midfielders on the line that are kind of you know looking good for Manchester United or City or Chelsea or Liverpool but I think he's worth mentioning and I think that you know with potentially Haller coming back he could be a real big boost and we could see even another level from Antonio going into the remainder of the season. Next on the list, we have the highest owned percentage player out of the five that I've chosen. At 16.1%, we have the Manchester 
18-year-old Mason Greenwood. It's kind of weird to say that the kid's definitely matured. Even over the last six months, you can see that he's gotten, you know, just even better than what we even think he could even be. And he could go on to be, you know, the next Mbappe, Ronaldo, Neymar. He's, he's very, very talented. And at 4.4 million, you cannot overlook Mason Greenwood. Obviously, some people have had him since the last game week as well. Obviously, thinking that he's going to start over Dan James, which he seems to be doing so. And he just seems to be just kind of just have everything a lot of people say he's kind of Van Persie-esque obviously he has one factor going for him that's even better than Van Persie and that's he could shoot with both feet and he had two rockets today in the game versus Bournemouth and he seems to be you know very talented his average points is obviously lower than what it's normally going to be because he's been actually involved in quite a few games this season just mainly coming off the bench and only getting a couple minutes here and there not really being able to show what he can do and obviously when he starts he can be quite lethal he's also an alternative to Rashford obviously being around four to five million less than Rashford so could be something there may potentially a double up between him Rashford and then you pick either Fernandez or Martial and I think that could be quite a good strategy going forward I think three men United attacking assets is kind of a must especially with kind of the defensive frailties that they showed versus Bournemouth today I think people are going to be shifting more towards the two midfielders one forward strategy for Man United assets he did have a low xg I think it was only 0.11 which means that if he had taken his two shots that he had today uh, 10 times, those would have been the only times he scored on average. Uh, however, he's, he's, he's a super special kid. The eye test shows everything. He's both footed. He only takes, you know, half a step before the ball's out from his feet, and it's just in the top corner or just laced past the goalkeeper. I mean, Rico, on his second goal today, you know, defended him as well as he probably could and just Mason just blasted it past the goalkeeper and didn't need much space to even score. And he's, you know, obviously super clinical. We said he's super clinical, super clutch. He could be the future number nine as he's probably going to be more of a striker as he seemed to bulk up a little bit and he seems to be, you know, getting a bit more, you know, about him basically rather than just being, you know, a, a f more on the, you know, lighter side teenager basically and he could be that like i said united's future number nine getting more and more game time which would potentially mean you know maybe if united do get Jaden sancho then dan james kind of misses out maybe marshall plays up in a front two with him maybe marshall gets moved on who knows but at the this moment in time i think greenwood is very special and i think you should be considering him definitely from game week 34 onwards moving on to the other side of manchester we have the other Manchester Wonder Kid. Obviously, he's wearing a blue kit and not a red one. And he's 4.2% owned. He's 5.3 million. And his name's Phil Foden. You may have heard of him. He's pretty good. And I think with, obviously, the departure of Leroy Sané, this means more time for Phil Foden. He's probably going to end up being like 8.5 million next season. So we obviously got to get him in cheap while we can. Pep also did say that he's going to be playing a bunch of new roles. So typically, Foden has been seen out on the flanks. That may mean he's going to be potentially experimenting him within a false nine maybe in more of a number eight kind of role kind of the way Kevin De Bruyne can kind of play in their 4-3-3 system and his just pairing with Kevin De Bruyne in the game versus Liverpool which is so so just refreshing to see just someone who comes in you know he's from the system and he just pairs with their best player or arguably the best player in Kevin De Bruyne definitely this season KDB has been their best player and he just kind of meshes with him so well always looking for that killer pass he had a no look pass in the game as well and he just looks super super you know slick on the ball he just knows where to be at the right time he was even furious like when 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 like you know he you know, when they scored five in their previous game before the Liverpool game, you know, and it's just that energy. It just seems to be so good from Foden. And like I said, he's only 5.3 million. He's a city asset. So obviously potentially some rotation there. You know, maybe he won't start this week, but obviously game week 34, you can kind of guess when he's going to play. Maybe he just starts playing every game. Maybe he's just like Kevin De Bruyne and he just keeps kind of playing the majority of minutes, but he'll definitely see minutes, which means he's always going to be a threat. And oh, he's probably among the top four most threatening. I haven't seen much to sh you know show me anything from Jesus or you know Bernardo Silva recently. And I think KDB, Sterling, Mars, and Foden are kind of the ones you're kind of looking out for. And versus Liverpool, he had three shots inside the box out of his total of four. He had two key passes. And he also had a goal and an assist, and that was against. Yeah, the champions in Liverpool. So I think he's doing quite well for himself, and I expect to see more minutes from Phil Foden. I expect him to start more games, and we can definitely see him moving on to the end of this season as well as well into next season. 
And last on our players to watch list, we have Everton's 5.7 million defender in Luca Digne. He's 11.2% owned, which is, you know, it's slightly higher than some of the players we've had on this list. However, I think Everton are showing promise. I think after their Spurs fixture, the only real tough one on paper that they have is Wolves away. However, they still have to play, you know, weaker opposition, including Aston Villa and Bournemouth, both of which games are at home. And I think that Everton, you know, with Richarlison, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is also on like the goals imminent stats. You know, he's probably going to score it sometime soon. I, I just hope he doesn't do it this week because I have him free hit it out, but I get him back next week. So hopefully that kind of works out. But yeah, I think just Digne is, just, is quite good. He's obviously very good at swinging in a cross, can do a deep line cross, can take set pieces, you know, very good uh, left foot, you know, all things considered when it be open play or set play. And I think, you know, although he has yet to score, he does have the explosiveness to go like goal assist plus clean sheet in a 2-0 win for Everton, you know, maybe he gets a set piece, maybe he gets a, you know, an assist from, a, you know, a deeper cross that goes in the head of Richarlison, and, and that, that would be quite good there, or even, even Calvert-Lewin, and he gets this, you know, he, you know, stops his four-game, you know, drought that he's had thus far, and, and I think that Everton could make a decent surge, potentially looking at a, a, a Europa League spot late on, and I think that if they're going to do that, then Digne is going to be one of the players that'll have to, you know, step up and kind of, you know, increase his defensive prowess as well as kind of put forth the attacking, you know, side of things that we've seen from him in the previous game weeks. And that's going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a comment down below as to who you're going to be keeping your eye on from game week 34 onwards. Make sure to give a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And make sure to turn those notification bells on so that you can get all of our latest content when it is readily available. Also give us a follow over on Twitter and Twitch. It's PilotFlame226 on those platforms as well. That's where we post our new videos, do our game week predictions over on Twitch as well, which we do every week, typically the day before, and we'll probably be doing one, I think, on Monday this week, because the fixtures kind of go back to back. There's there's no break, basically, until this coming Friday, so that's probably when we'll do it there. I'll release the time later on then, but I hope you enjoyed it, and until the next video, take care.